Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I want to talk about marriage. Uh, this is uh, the year of 2015, and the subject of marriage today in America has become quite a controversy. So I'd like to tell you what I think about um, what the United States Supreme Court has done and what the Bible says about marriage and how I see uh, a solution to this uh, drama that's going on. First of all, if you don't know me, uh, I am a Christian. This is a person who relies completely on Jesus Christ for salvation. I'm not trying to work my way to heaven and earn heaven by uh, striving and performing and laboring my way into heaven and hoping that God thinks I did enough good works and he lets me in. No, as a Christian, I'm relying on Jesus to get me to heaven. I'm relying on my faith in him to satisfy God. So I, I am, of course, going to look at this from that perspective. And I, I believe in the five solas that were uh, established during the Reformation period. And the first is uh, sola, sola gracia, grace alone. It's only by the grace of God that we get saved. And I believe in faith alone, that it's only through our faith that we get saved. Uh, no religious work on our part is required. It's only faith. And I believe in Christ alone. And that is that my faith must be completely on Christ. No one else, nothing else but Christ. And I believe in glory alone. And that is that all the glory goes to God. All the glory goes to our Savior God, Jesus Christ. He gets all the credit, all the praise, all the glory. And finally, I also believe in sola scriptura. And that means that uh, everything in life, uh, if I want to determine its truth, it's got to pass the, pass the test of scripture. See, this book here, it's the, the Holy Bible, uh, but it's not one book. It's 66 books. They're all compiled together, uh, forming what we call the Bible today. 39 of these books were written, they're called the Old Testament. They are written uh, before Jesus Christ was crucified. And then there's 27 books that we call the New Testament. These were written after Jesus' birth, uh, death, and resurrection. Um, but all of these books make up the Bible, and they were written on uh, three different continents by over 40 different authors over a 1,500 year span. And this is our source of truth. Now, there's a lot of things that subjects that we can study there are not in the Bible. But if we're studying something and uh, I want to know if it's true or not, I look to the Bible, and if the Bible says it's true, then I'm going to accept it. If the Bible says it's not true, then I'm going to reject it. So this is the perspective that I bring to this conversation. So what does the Bible say about marriage? First of all, it says that uh, marriage is a, a, a lifelong commitment between a man and a woman, uh, where they, they take a vow or a promise that they will be united as husband and wife for the rest of their lives. That's how the Bible defines marriage. And it's, it's only between a man and a woman. So, uh, therefore, I, I cannot 
accept that a marriage can be between two people of the same sex. Uh, another another uh, clear uh, proof to me that marriage between two people of the same sex uh, is, is not a marriage at all uh, is because of just anatomy. You see, the Bible says that he made us male and female. Now, we know that a man and a woman anatomically are different. Anatomically are really opposite. They're designed to fit together, just as in plumbing, you have a male part and a female part, and they fit together in a certain way. And the scripture tells us that the, the reason that we're made that way is for the purpose of reproduction so that the, the husband and the wife, through intercourse, through sexual intercourse, they can have children. So the only way this can happen is with a male and a female coming together. The, no one can dispute that a, a man's sexual parts and a woman's sexual parts were not designed to come together for the purpose of reproduction. No one can dispute that. But it's clearly the case that two people of the same sex are not anatomically correct to come together for the purpose of sexual intercourse, for the purpose of sexual reproduction. So I have two very compelling reasons to not accept uh, marriage between two people of the same sex. First of all, the Bible says it's only between a man and a woman. And the, Bible, and the anatomy tells me that we were not designed in that, in that way for that purpose. So for those reasons, it's, it's obvious to me that uh, um, a marriage can only happen between a man and a woman. Now, I don't know what the definition of the word marriage would be in the dictionary today. I, I didn't look it up, but it probably says marriage between a man and a woman, but I, I suspect maybe the newer editions of the Bible are going to take away that qualification that it's a man and a woman, particularly since uh, this uh, Supreme Court in the United States has made same-sex marriage a constitutional right. So I expect the definitions in the dictionaries will probably be changing. Uh, but to me, it's clear that I personally cannot accept that uh, a union between two people of the same sex as a marriage. Now, you can call it all kinds of things. Um, the scriptures tells us clearly that this is uh, uh, not what God, the purpose for which God made us. And, and this, it also tells us that uh, God does not like it, that God does not want two people of the same sex to come together in this way. Um, so for these reasons, uh, I could personally could not accept that uh, two people in the same sex, even if they take a vow to be together and be monogamous and spend their lives together, you can call it some other kind of union. You, you know, we can come up with other words and phrases that might be acceptable to me, but I can't use the word marriage. That's not historically what the word is meant. That's not what the word means in the, in the scriptures. Now that brings me to another uh, problem and solution. And the problem is that I believe in America now, the argument is not going to be um, that um, can two people of the same sex get married. It seems that the, the uh, Supreme Court has uh, uh, declared that as a right. 
Uh, maybe through over the years there will be a fight over that and it will be uh, corrected, but maybe not. But in the meantime, you will find people who are entering into this kind of a, arrangement and, 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 and the legal system and many people in America will recognize it as a marriage. I will not recognize it as a marriage. Um, but the problem is uh, people like me who say that's not a marriage, uh, we can easily be called bigots and um, uh, haters because of our viewpoint. And it, I don't mind being called names. Uh, that if someone wants to call me names over that, then that's fine. I've been called a lot of names over the years because of my faith. But what we, we need to do is protect the religious freedom of people in America so that I have the right to say, I don't accept same-sex marriage. I, I will never uh, declare that it is a legitimate marriage. And I want to have the right to say that. But I'm afraid that uh, the, the legal system may even begin to jail people who do not hold to that viewpoint that, uh, uh, you know, it is, it is a same-sex couple is, is a real marriage. So I think that we're in for quite a battle over the future here about uh, religious freedom. Okay, if you want to give homosexuals the freedom to enter into uh, the, a marriage, uh, I must also have the freedom to say, well, I, you can call it what you want, but I'm not going to call it a marriage. I'm not going to honor or accept it as a legitimate era, marriage. So will I have the freedom to say that and think that in the future? Uh, that That is the next, uh, I think, controversy, the next battle for religious freedom. But I, I have a solution to all of this. And... I don't think this is a solution will ever happen, but this is my solution. Uh, I, I don't see anywhere uh, in, in the scriptures here where it says that any government has the right to ordain or establish marriages. A marriage is established between a man and a woman when they take a vow before God, uh, I believe that uh, the United States federal government and the various states and counties in this country, uh, they should just completely get out of the marriage business. Uh, that way, if two people of any kind want to say that they're married, they can say whatever they want. But then I also have the right to say, I don't believe they are married. Or I do accept that as a marriage. I think that uh, when the state gets involved in it, that's where the problem is. Um, I don't know if this is historically correct, but uh, someone once said to me, that uh, the word um, F-U-C-K uh, is, is an, an acronym for fornication under the consent of the king. In other words, people had to get permission from the king or from the government to fornicate or to be married. And that was kind of the beginnings of the government sanctioning uh, marriages. I don't, I don't see any case in the Bible where people got married and they had to get a marriage certificate and they had to get some kind of uh, sanctioning or authorization or approval or license from a, a government. If the government got out of the marriage business, then... Uh, Anybody could 
say whatever their relationship is, whatever they want. And and then anybody else could 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 say I agree or disagree that that's a marriage. That's the way it should be. So I, I hope that uh, someday this is the case, that the government is is uh, no longer involved in our business in that way. If uh, two people decide to take a, a vow before God, to a man and a woman to take a vow, then I would say that's a legitimate marriage. Now, my wife and I got married in August of 1979. Uh, we, we got licensed by the state, and it's a good thing we did, because that's the only way that we have uh, certain legal rights as a husband and a wife, like Social Security and uh, benefits that uh, uh, come into play, that they have to be considered. So I, I would like to see that uh, uh, any of these benefits could be assigned to any person, just like uh, I should be able to assign my Social Security benefits to any person as a, as a beneficiary. And that way, if two people of the same sex wanted to assign their Social Security benefits to each other, as a, one is a beneficiary, then you'd have the right to do it. If you wanted to assign it to your brother or your son or your, or your best friend or anybody else, you could do it. But the way it is now, it has to be a marriage. And the marriage has to be sanctioned by the state. So these are reasons that that uh, myself and, and many people uh, have been forced to uh, get our license, our marriage license from the state, so that we have these rights. And I would like to see that done away with. So that's my viewpoint on it. Uh, I think we're in for quite a fight in the near future uh, over this as far as, all uh, right, the the Supreme Court has spoken. Many people will say, well, it's settled legally, but now you have people that are going to be challenging it in terms of, uh, let's say, someone who does not want to perform a wedding ceremony because it's the same sex, the same sex couple. Someone who does not want to bake a wedding cake and put two men on it instead of a man and a woman on the cake. Or... There's many examples like that, but uh, these are the arguments that will be uh, discussed and debated, I think, over the next few years. But what's important is that we keep our religious freedom. I've seen religious freedoms taken away uh, over in England and in Canada. Right now in America, we still have a lot of freedom of speech, a lot of freedom of religion, but I'm afraid that this is the next step in them trying to take away our freedoms. So to me, uh, I will just go along with and accept the, the doctrines that I find in the Bible. And what the Bible says is that marriage is a lifelong commitment between a man and a woman to be husband and wife together. I'd like to hear your opinion on this. Uh, thank you for watching. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.